So, basically, we're going to do a Willet run today on our 1955 Chevrolet. There's a parade coming up, and I've always wanted to drive this thing in the parade. Um, Maybe I ought to bring you guys in on the deal. We're talking about trying to get this truck running to tow the race car in the parade. You guys think we can make it? 1955 Chevy 6100. The seat's in good shape. That's New Mexico for you. Just like every Chevy, the headliner's falling. I probably got to drain the fuel. Got to evict all these spiders. They ain't paying no rent. Uh, guys, you got to charge them. How's the clutch? I have no idea. Probably mechanical, I guess. I don't see any height. I doubt this. There's no way this clutch is hydraulic, Dad. Somebody changed this engine. This is not the original engine. Why do you say that? See that fan right there? The old ones used to have a fan that reached all the way up there. Somebody put that little baby fan on it. You sure it didn't have some kind of shroud? The old one did, and this one done. I'm telling, I think this thing was running racing. I don't know when it was running. I on. think it needs a 386 in it. So I think it needs right a, that? I think it needs a 12 valve Cummings in it or 24 valve. Chevy 6100. The death fuel tank. The regulator and the generator. Take that loose and take them out and we'll put the self energizing the alternator. Well, it depends. Maybe we should try to get it running first. The generator might work. It's okay. I'm, it's I think run. we can get it running. It's a 12 volt, so... The tires are the biggest problem. If we can figure out a solution for the tires, I think we can get the rest of this running. No problem. Not only those are the tires. Look at the tires. 20s, aren't they? I have no idea. We got to find it. Look at them lugs. Apparently, if five, if five won't hold it, 10 never would have. Eight. I don't think it's an eight lug. I think it's ten. No. That's a ten lug, dude. That's five. There's five in there right now. No, that's just a different. Oh, it's a different belt. Okay, so it is only Board a five lug. What size tires are these? They're seven point five by twenties. You think so? I read it on the other side. Is it say it on the other side? Yeah. That one you can't read. Off the seat. This is where you put your flag. Ah, yeah. oh, 7.5 by 20s. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to get some different rims, dude. But we're not getting that this week. 8.25 by 20. My 55 Chevy on 20s. <laughs> Throw some D's on it. I like the hydraulic lift still on it. Say what? Hey, I'll sell you that bike half off. Yeah, half off. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Clutch feel okay. I think you spell brakes on this thing with an O, not an A. Brokes. <laughs> uh, need brake fluid. Brake fluid's probably under this floor here. Right there. Well, the battery box is over there. Unlock that door. Can you unlock that door? This is about how things rust in New Mexico, luckily. Oh yeah, check that out. That's the latest thing in my strips. Right, latest in 1955, USA. They're USA. The truck was made in USA too. The brake fluid is filling up right here. Oh, here's a new ignition switch in here. I had to measure that battery box to go buy a battery for it. It's a little battery. I got one. Uh, you got to take this cap off here. It's a screw out that you got to clean it before you take it off. Half I'm half tempted to pressure wash the whole truck first. 
Well, Man, that seat's in really good shape, isn't it? That is what they built now. Good lord. The dash looks nice. We might need a window or two. The tires are the thing I'm worried about. They're, they're real common tires. If I could get tires for this bad boy. If I could get tires for Toothless here. I might name this truck Toothless. Look. Cutting torch. It's got strong arm steering. It's got giant steering wheel steering. Power yeah. steering. The power steering's right here. I bet you this thing would run pretty easily. I bet you we'd get it running. Tires are the worry. The gas tank is right here. And... Yeah. Well, well, we'll have to modify the fuel. Actually, that cap looks great. Look, the rubber's not even dry rotted. Oh, yeah, it is. Never mind, I take it back. I should get a list together of what we need to get. Do you think we can put the money into getting... If I put a couple hundred bucks, we can make this thing run in two days, three days? You got to buy brake wood. Yep. We got battery cable shot. Okay. We got... Because uh, these battery cables are kind of pathetic. They're not as bad as I thought they would be. Is that a PTO? What is that right there? Uh, no. It's got two speed rear axle. What's this then? What's this right here? If that's the I two speed. Oh. This one is so old. Look at the two axle and the two transmission. Oh, wow. It's just got a bunch of gears in the thing then. Yeah. Ignition switch. Bunch of wires. I think this is the. You think that's the horn or the ignition switch? That's the horn. That's why they used to do horns. And this right here is a trailer brake, probably. Really? Probably. Someone can make them look at it. Electric trailer brake. I have no idea. I wouldn't even, I'm not even pretending to know. Emergency brake. Emergency brake? Man, that feels good. Oh, yeah, of course. What's this? That's that might be how you start it. But then you have to kill it too. So. There's got to be a toggle switch somewhere. You see a toggle switch? Oh, what's this? No. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah, typical New Mexico. It ate away all the plastic. First, we got to make sure we can get tires for it. This jack's heavy. Pretty sure that the lug pattern from the front. match the lug pattern from the back i know nothing about these tires i know nothing about these rims it's been what's been holding me back from getting this thing running for a time for some time now but i'm pretty sure that plate right there is just covering up the other five lugs because they don't need them in the front wait what i'm pretty sure this has a plate here that covers up where the other lugs are supposed to be that the spacing is exactly the same I don't know if you brought those big enough sockets. Apparently we may not have big enough sockets. Try this one. Bad toss. No, it's bigger than a one inch, go go. Yeah, we didn't bring a big enough socket. What size uh what size socket do we need for these, you think? Bigger than one inch. You know, for a 6100, this thing still has a straight six in it, like my Nova. Yeah, it's because it's got a lot of transmission. Socket a little bit too big. Nope, it rounded. Well, I'm glad it comes with an extension holder. Apparently we're going to find something else. Back to O'Reilly's. 
So I'm gonna go try to find something to take one of those off to take with us to find the right size socket. Found some stuff here. There's a big old lug wrench. That might be it. A uh, pipe wrench and a cheater bar. Let's see what we can do. First go go, let's see if that lug wrench will fit on there. Holy crap. Okay, well that's the size. It's probably for this truck. You're probably right. And it broke too. Let's go find the socket. Bump it up to the Sullivan Mobile. I love how these trucks came with the shelf. Fully built in from factory. Custom. Yeah, yeah. One down, 14 more to go. And we are back. It's just me now. My dad had to go to work, sadly. Y'all need to start subscribing so my dad no longer has to do that. You guys gotta tell me when that tire's off the ground. Got it? This makes no god sense. Not bad. Progress, I guess. I'm gonna call my dad. Okay, yeah. now now can you say all that again, but to the camera this time? Which part? About what you want me to do with the back tire. Okay, what I want you to do is, I want you to jack up the back tire just high enough to where you can take the outside tire off and leave the inside tire. That way you can just let the jack back down and be good. Okay, I also want to say I'm swinging for workers comp. <laughs> Our workman's comp works a little differently here. You were fired before you got hurt. God so we damn it. Give you workman's comp. I see how it is. Alright, All right, love you, Dad. Bye. Bye. Alright, I guess time to screw this back on without the plate. My dad wants the plate. And now we move to the back tire. How do we. I found it, Jimmy. Jimmy, I found it, Jimmy, I found it. Y'all are on the Sullivan Express mobile right now. All right, you guys see that little doodad right there hanging below the hitch? That's where I'm putting the jack. It breaks, it breaks. Just me, just gives me my dad an excuse to build a new bed. as I'm willing to go up the tent. And the etc. of the year award goes to whatever that this etc.'s name is. This is gonna be heavy. Real heavy. So 
Time to dig out from underneath this tire with trusty old spoon and foot. Jimmy's, I got it off, Jimmy's. This tire is heavy. Well, turns out that tire was the only one holding that thing together. And I want to say this, this is basically our version of Stubby Bob. If you know what that's from, comment down below. So this week, on this beautiful day, You may be like, well, is it a beautiful day? Well, it's New Mexico, so it's not hot. It is cold, but I'm still wearing shorts. Might be a little too cold for shorts. But the advantage to this weather is we don't have to worry about the GoPros overheating. <laughs> I'm coming over to Grandpa's to pick up a couple items. That one has over 12 volts. That one's 12? Yeah, that one's good. But let's check this one while we're at it. That one's 12 as well. So, this is that fuel pump. Yeah. From the 1800s. So, Grandpa's got to do t-ball practice because JT's doing t-ball and Uncle Scotty's uh, coaching. So, Grandpa's helping. All right, well, I can't see... <laughs> I need more hands to be able to hold the camera and test this fuel pump at the same time. Because it does look like it's got a bit of age to it. But anything from Grandpa's does. Maybe it's because that one needs cleaned. No, that fuel pump doesn't work. All right, let's go see if we can find ourselves a fuel pump solution. Back with another fuel pump from Grandpa's. Ah, oh, sticker fell off. This one's a Mr. Gasket. Let's see if I can show you guys a little closer here. Just use friction to hold that side on. Maybe friction's not enough. It just worked, I swear. There it goes. We have a fuel pump. Now, Grandpa's suggesting we take Tiny here because he says the battery area is probably small to put the battery in. I want to apologize in advance for any dogs or noise that's going on. Oh my God, look at my hair. It's like I'm out on an adventure. Um, it's probably pretty loud out there. It's cold. Um, cold for New Mexico. Uh, there's some dogs barking and stuff. I really hope that clears up. We're going to see if we can get this 55 Chevy running. Let me tell you a little bit about this thing. Right, so when I bought this piece of property, it came with the truck, right, and the title. So... I've always loved this truck, I've had some offers for it, been wanting to get it working. My problem is I know absolutely nothing about older vehicles. I mean, yeah, 70s vehicles, but 1955? We've looked at it a couple of times. I really don't know what to do about the wheels still. We're gonna try to just run them like they are and at least just do the parade. But I really wanna get it ready for the parade because, I mean, it's a cool truck. This truck would be awesome to tow the race car with, right? Or tow even just in the parade 
It's just a really cool truck. I'd like to use it. But there's no way I can probably do it with the split rims that it's got. I want to replace those. Now, um, I did find a local place in town that will change my split rims for me. They say, oh, we'll change your split rims for you. But I'm still limited on speed that way. So I wouldn't, I still wouldn't be able to go highway speeds or nothing. I'd also like to make it diesel, but maybe a big block big block gasoline but i'd really like to go diesel with it i was really kind of hoping grandpa would be coming out here with me because he's the one that knows about these old vehicles he used to work on model a's when people still drove them on the road all the way up until newer vehicles so he knows about these trucks these are common trucks for him to know how to work on i really don't know what i'm doing on this truck but i mean it's still the same sim simple concepts right i think it might still have a generator on it that's why it's got an outlet on the back it's got an outlet on the back which is awesome it's got um, a hydraulic cylinder on the back to lift trailers. That's awesome. I really love some of the features of this truck. I'm going to keep it pretty much like it is. I want to keep it a flatbed. Well, work bed, not necessarily a flatbed. It's come more of a work bed. And yeah, I really want to get this thing rolling. Let's, let's see what we can do about this. <sighs> sorry I look like the so, sorry I look like I just came out of an excursion where I was lost in the forest I just want to get it running and driving if we get it running and driving we will be good <laughs> this thing does not go up very high to have a lot of head headroom all right. Oh, wow, that coil looks relatively new. What year was this thing tagged? Look, the fuel pump. It looks like it... This looks like it's been worked on recently. Ballast resistor. Wiring looks good. This doesn't look like it's going to be hard to get going. You know, I didn't even think about bringing a hose clamp. Look, we're missing our vacuum line there. Or is that it? Oh, there's our vacuum line. Here's our vacuum line. Let's get a stick and evict these uh, spiders. Man, this thing looks good. I do know a guy that can replace the windows. I met him recently, so we're going to see how that goes. These got to be mobile home wheels. No, they're not. They're solid axles. What are these tires for? Does anybody know what these tires are for? No license plate. There's not even a mounting bracket for the license plate. Trailer connection. I think the bed, it looks awesome. It might seal it off a little better. The patina looks pretty good. No rust. All solid. Missing part of its mustache. Like everything in New Mexico, doesn't rust. Floor pans are good. That's where our battery goes. See, we got this high-low here, and then this high-low here. It says two-speed axle. And I wonder if that's for a transmission. I don't know. Oh, that primer button there looks like it's to start it. That's probably the choke. What is this? Is this the... I don't know what that is. Hey, it came with a heater. Dude. Gauges, I wonder if they work. This thing's been running not too long ago. Inside gauges look pretty cool. Uh, it says... We got 61,000 miles on it. I didn't think it'd have that many miles on it. I really didn't. All right, well, let's see if we can open that side. It doesn't look like this thing has door locks whatsoever. Yeah. 
air brake. This thing's got air brakes? Holy cow. Sixteen thousand pounds. Brake light, heater, heater. Wow, everything looks like that works. That's in good shape. Holy cow, this thing's in good shape. Oh, oh, there is a hole in that floorboard right there. No idea what that is. Maybe a PTO? PTO maybe, guys? Anybody in the comments know what that is? Apparently you gotta hold up on this handle and then it'll unlock. Probably need to lube all this. I should have probably bought lube. Brilliant. Is that for hydraulic fluid or is that the fuel cell? Because this is usually the fuel cell, which that thing looks nice and chrome. Man, I'm just so shocked how good this thing is. Okay, we got one battery cable here, another battery cable here. Okay, we got one battery cable here, another battery cable here. I think Grandpa's right when he said that we're gonna need that littler battery. Okay, I think that's reverse. One, two, three, four. So four and reverse. Wow, that's factory too. Look at that Chevrolet heater. Dang, I'm digging this, and heck, that we might have to just run those battery cables. Might be all right here, guys. I don't have a lot of problems here. This may not be bad. Let's see if we can find a dipstick. Apparently, napkins also weren't on the list of things I should have brought. So, well, oh, almost tripped. <laughs> So, my will it run has already turned into a trip to the store. Um, at least to the house. I might have some lube there. Go grab some lube. Uh, what else? Lube. Something to check the oil with. And... I'm probably it. Oh, compression tester. I wanted to test the compression of the pistons. Okay, those are the three things. Don't, don't let me forget. Lube compression tester and something to check the oil maybe some hand wipes four things those four things all right see you in a bit well, apparently it's been a while since we've done a will it run Matt a lubricant had to pick some of that up and apparently i've gotten horrible at this i did not have anything or prepared so let's start with the essentials of a will it run we're going to lube up these doors so we don't get uh stuck in it anymore might as well give them some too we went with the uh, since pb blast pretty much dies after two sprays we're trying the wd-40 penetrating oil not a big wd-40 fan but let's see how it goes All right. Oh yeah, we stole that lug nut. All right, now I was over here before. Oh, I was gonna check the oil. Let me go get the, I got a rag now. I don't know if y'all can see that in the camera, but apparently I bumped it when I was taking it out and hit a cobweb. All right, so it says it's full. Actually, it says it's over full. Is that a good sign? 
It doesn't smell like just regular oil. It smells kind of like it's got fuel in it. That's not a good thing. Now let's check the coolant. Which is non-existent. No coolant. Excellent. We're not going to use that fuel system, so we ain't got to worry about that. But I doubt we're going to drive this thing today. Especially since gogo has got the tire and he's still doing security. And look, fuse box. They both look good. So, no coolant. Smells like there's fuel in the oil. We're doing excellent. Now, you'll notice I'm wearing gloves now, but... I always start wearing gloves. I never end up with them at the end of the day. Let's get our battery terminal cleaner. This one's obviously the ground because it's got a big giant steel cable on it. See if it even fits. Yeah, buddy. As long as I take the two by six lift kit out, actually, I might need that. Put that back in there. Positives on the right side. Man, it's almost like this thing's destined to be in there. I said almost. Okay, that wasn't a very good scraping, but might have to do. All right, we'll just force it down better. That's, that'll help the scraping. Okay, let's try taking our two by six out. I'm glad I decided to do that after I got that wedge down there. I don't know what that is, but it fell out. It almost looks like it's a, I don't know, terminal spacer or something. Oh, wow, that fits a lot better now. Okay. See if I can get to this at all. Negative, positive, any. Any smoking? No fire yet. Still no fire. Excuse me. I am wondering. Let's get our multimeter out. Is it too ambitious to assume that the battery is going to be connected properly? Just going to try to go for a little spot that's already rusty. That way I know it already had metal. I'm not taking some of the paint off. Okay, so we're getting a ground. Our ground is connected. Awesome. Twelve volts. We're getting all twelve volts through the circuit. It's a good sign. Good sign. You know, because this is one of the fancy new age vehicles, it comes with the push button start. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. But that also means we need a toggle switch to turn it on. All I'm saying is that fell out and it scared the crap out of me. I'm like, what kind of snake was that? Where would the on switch be? If someone hooked that up as the prime. That's the on switch I bet. You think? No. I hate how all these knobs are missing. I'm gonna have to try to find something like that or make something or, I don't know. That's the only toggle switch I see. So I'm gonna go trick that and see if, well, you know what? That was the starter kicking. That's awesome. Let's make sure this is a neutral since I was fiddling with it. Yeah, neutral. Now let's check to see if our coil has starter sounded stuck by the way it's great we bring you all along on this adventure as well might as well all right i'm seeing what's going on okay so the starter's got power we're seeing what's going on i'm just seeing what we more taking inventory if i get running by the parade and you see it in the parade though i'm, I'm not it wasn't me you know what i would do i'd get rid of them mirrors and get rid of all the on the bed 
because that tells you this is the truck that they hauled all these trailers in here with. Yeah, that's kind of what the truck's for. That's what it was made for. We are getting power to the starter. We are not getting power to the coil. We are getting power to the primer button, otherwise the starter wouldn't have tried to kick over. Y'all take a look there and let me know if you see what's happening. Okay, well now the starter's not wanting to kick over. Yeah, let me go get my cheater button. I took this 10 gauge wire, because it's kind of the right size. Here's the fuel pump we got from Grandpa's. Starter switch. It nice to have some alligator clips. Do I have alligator clips? No, because I'm not prepared for this. I am a failure today, dude. I'm missing everything. I got a couple hose clamps. That's a good thing because I almost forgot those. I got alligator clip here. So what if I was to put one of these bad boys on here like that? What I need to do is have one of these with the little cheater wire connection. Ooh, that's a good idea. Can I do that? Let me pull this back. You know what? Maybe I'll just throw another one of these on here just like that. Okay, here's our setup. Still prefer some alligator clips. I need it'd be nice to have some. I had some at one point. I don't know where they are. Little jumper wires would have been perfect for this. It is tough to reach down there. I'll tell you that much right now. I'm not tall enough. Actually, my gut's in the way, but yeah, I'm not tall enough. I don't know if this is very visible for y'all, but I'm trying. Okay, so just in case you can't see, the idea is that I use this clip, clip that to where it needs to be over here, which is the main power line. We can at least check to see if the engine will turn over. Very important at this point. Let's see if Grandpa's battery has enough beans in it. Or... Not... Doesn't sound like it's making any noise. All right. Okay, that side's got 12 volts. And that, that's got 12 volts. That starter had nothing. Absolutely nothing. It, I heard it before. Don't tell me this engine's stuck. All right, well, let's pull some spark plugs and we'll throw some lube down. Y'all died on me. We're going to test out this WD-40 fast acting penetrant. So I'm going to pull the spark plugs and we'll see if we get it cranking. I don't know if this is the right firing order. That spark plug wire came off incredibly easy though. So we bought this electric box at the last auction because it was cheap. Coincidentally, has labels in it. Now I don't have anything to write on it with though because apparently I forgot my pen, but luckily one of the girls left me this pencil. So I wrote one on there. Hopefully these still stick. Kind of brush up the dust. Well, if nothing else, maybe it'll stick to itself. One. Since this is a straight six, I'll go ahead and just label them all. I mean, it should be pretty obvious, but better to be safe than dumb. All right. I'm gonna change up my mentality that way it holds better, or change up my what is it called? The tactic. All right. Stickers aren't working like I want them to. Guess we'll try again. We lost two, four, and five. Oh, we're losing six. Apparently these stickers aren't as stickery as I thought they'd be stickering. I think that plan failed. Either way, let's pull these. Man, it is hard to fit under this hood. Ooh, the spark plug wires are coming off pretty easily. All right, brought a couple different sockets here just to kind of guess, because I don't know what size these are. And I nailed it first try, 13 sixteenths. All right, let's see how hard this is gonna be to take off. <clears throat> oh, that's great. I think I just broke that rubber boot. It's all right. It's got a substitute rubber boot, right? You know what they say? If one wasn't good, the second one will get it. That one came off a lot easier. That one's got something in it. See how good you are at cleaning WD-40. Clean all that crap out of there. You know what? Just to help out a little. Do this too, maybe it'll... You know where they messed up? 
They didn't mess up by making the wheel well like this. They messed up by not making it longer so we could just lay down right here completely. Oh, the is that the firing order on the block? No. All right, let's look at the first one. Doesn't look too bad. Not too bad, not too bad. Except for there's a dead spider on there. You know, I definitely miss Gogo -Go being here because I'm fine with doing the work. It's a lot harder for me to joke around that way. You got to give credit to the guys that do this. Joke around and film on camera because I usually make Gogo -Go do the work and then I just sit here and joke around. That one also has a lot of carbon on it. More carbon buildup. So far they're coming out pretty easy. I guess that's the luck of living where we live. Nothing rusts here. I mean, heck, that looks like the original radiator. Maybe it's not. I mean, it does have a flexi hose, so somebody's obviously worked on this thing before. That one's got some carbon buildup. The spark plugs look relatively new too, almost like someone's worked on it before. I mean, obviously the coil makes it obvious. I wonder what year it was that Chevrolet stopped putting the MSD ignition super coils on their uh, pickups. Because obviously it's original in 1955. Oh buddy, that one's got a lot of crud on it. Man, this is what I need. This is where I need one of them bore scopes. What I really need is a shop. Bore scope's easy if I just had a shop. That one also, all of them have carbon on them. That one had some other crap on there, but I think that might have been just from on top of the cylinder head. All right, now that we know none of them are on compression stroke, we'll try it one more time. Yeah, I didn't think anything was gonna happen. I know what y'all are thinking. Maybe I should deal with the starter more. And I see your logic, but this engine been sitting a while anyway. It don't hurt to get a little bit of lubrication in the cylinder before we start trying to run this thing. But now that I got this done, let's tap on that starter, see what goes on. Most people don't know that this is a standard 1955 Chevrolet hammer. Comes with every one. Hmm. Well, I guess I need to pull that thing. Man, I was really hoping to not have to climb under this thing. God, those dogs. If I had a shop, I could just tow this into there and work on it there. I mean, it looks like a traditional Chevy starter. It obviously doesn't bolt on like one, though. How does that thing bolt on? Has it just got two bolts? Man, I really didn't want to climb under this thing. Oh, I see the fuel holds down there. Let me try tapping on it one more time. It's got a mechanical fuel pump. Half tempted to try that bad boy when we get going. Nah. We probably won't. All right, so pulling the starter, I think that is what we gotta do. That wire looks a little crusty. Balance resistor makes it kind of funky, but dang, I really didn't want to climb under here. I don't even have the stuff to climb under here. Half tempted to let these set overnight, and we'll come start on this tomorrow. We don't have water. I might make it a list. Get some water, get something I can lay on so I'm not the goat heads, and start back on this tomorrow. Have everything else ready. Well, I'll at least think about it. If I think about anything else, you'll see me back out here today. More than likely, it'll be tomorrow. So before I pack everything up today, I was thinking I'll give it one more quick spray down, make sure it's got plenty of lubricant in here so it's ready tomorrow. And since since it'll be basically out in the weather, I'll probably put the spark plugs back on it too. Just at least a couple threads, just to, you know, keep anything from falling in there. But while the spark plugs are out, so I can see if the engine's locked up or whatever, maybe I can still turn this thing. Maybe I got enough beans without spark plugs in it to make it go somewhere. That starter also might be engaged, which may break it free. So let's try this. Put on my hopefully knuckle sabers. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't want to move. Like at all at all. But I don't have it in me to turn that engine, even without spark plugs. But it could be all kinds of things. I think there's a PTO, maybe the PTO's engaged. Let me get the stuff. I'll pull the starter out tomorrow. We'll check it again. Plus, I kind of want to go to the drawing board. I don't know enough about these old trucks to do anything about. I don't know if Google does either. Might have to pick Grandpa's brain about it. Might write down some of these block numbers on here. Before I forget. Just in case there's a draw or something. Day two, I went and got a jack. I got something I can lay on the ground so I can climb underneath it to get this starter out. But first, I think maybe we should pull spark plugs spark plugs and then see if it'll crank again it'd be nice to cut my hair i got a plan it'd be nice to cut my hair it is what it is it's still a cold morning but it's warming up i'm just getting a little bit of a late start but that's because i was getting things together we're gonna pull spark plugs first go ahead and give it a crank see if we unstuck this engine once again i'm gonna try to start with my gloves and then lose them throughout the course of the day i just put them a couple threads in there so that nothing extra fell in there overnight see how our door works today it doesn't. Works good that way though. Still nothing. I feel like we have two options. One is to pull that starter. 
and try to move it from the flywheel. Number two is to pull the radiator, which it kind of kind of looks like it's leaking right there. That's where the leak is. Pull the radiator and try to put a, something on the front end. So I think pulling the starter is a better bet because we probably should rebuild it anyway because it probably doesn't work. All right, well, let's pull that out and see what we can do about it. No idea what size wrench that is there. Let's see. Bet you if I take a half inch and a 916 down there, I'm pretty well set. I'm not going to be able to fit the impact for sure. Take a socket and maybe some wrenches. Do I have wrenches? I may not even have wrenches here with me. Well, then hopefully a socket fits. Who tries to do a wheel at one in the desert without sockets or without wrenches? Is that factory? There's no way that's factory. Obviously, the flexi hoses are not factory, but that that's not that can't be factory is it if somebody knows let me know because i don't here's our jack handle i couldn't find the rest of it so i brought it back up custom will it run creeper my first time ever looking under here let's go take a look that's what's that break for i think that's a fuel line fuel line we'll just go ahead and move that out the way it looks like the speedo cable is disconnected differential holy differential that definitely a two gear differential for sure this thing might be easier than i thought as long as this socket fits if it don't fit i'm i need a wrench nine sixteenths dang it why didn't I think of this? All right, I will be back. Brought a stick to help get rid of some of these cobwebs. Hopefully it's just cobwebs. All right, so apparently I did forget wrenches and I have, I do have this. I don't know how good it's gonna be. I have a feeling it's not gonna be that good. And I did find a metric 9 16 So that and a 7 16 and a pair of semi-broken cheap Chinese locking pliers. So we should be good, right? That doesn't even fit. That one's broke loose. This one also has to come off of there. Is that a different size? Seriously? No, it's not. It's just the grime. It'd be nice if it was just them too, but I know it's not. Never that lucky. Almost pulled a go-go and turned it the wrong way. All right, well, that one's good. I also brought a flat bar. Well, kind of a flat bar. Old trusty um, tire iron made in the USA. Let's see if we can turn this engine with it. Looks like there's a bolt back here I gotta take off. Is that really it? Well, I can't get to that one here, but I can put a ratchet on that one, so I shouldn't have put my ratchets up. Now, it's always good to use name brand equipment when you're working on stuff like this. See, Drop Forge Steel. Apparently, that's the brand name. But hey, if it works, it works, right? That's all that really matters. One down. Since I'm under here anyway, because I got to get the other one from the top, let me see if I can unstick this engine real quick. Well, it's not that stuck. I hear nothing break. Okay, that was that was dirt falling, not not breaking. All right, but it's turning. That's good. Maybe it's just our starter bed. Maybe we don't have a locked up engine. I 
All right. And it also looks like it's easier to get that bolt from underneath by just coming and simply getting it from this side. All right, well, apparently I need to go get my socket wrench. I might even get the Ugga Dugga just to make life easier on myself. I did not bring an adapter for my Chrome Impact set, but I do have this question for Hart, if anybody from Hart's out there. Why is it that your hat in your big $100 box from Walmart, you got your half inch drive that's a 12 point and your 3 8 drive is a six point. Isn't the six point the lot, is, isn't the six point the stronger version? Why would that be on the half inch? Just curious. I mean, I need a stronger impact for my impact gun. Well, that made that easy. 1955, they should have planned for people to use impact wrenches. And that's it, those are the three bolts holding that bad boy. All right, let's go to the top. I'm gonna disconnect the wires from the top because this is the first engine I think I've ever been able to do that on. All right. You know, for starting out as a cold morning, it sure is starting to get hot. Leave it to New Mexico. All right, let's take off our, our hot wire switch. Full disclosure, Grandpa did say that if I wanted to. All right, I like this hood already. I've never been under a vehicle where it echoes, echoes, echoes. I don't know if you guys could pick that up, but I am. Hopefully it's not annoying. Grandpa did say I could take this to him and he'd help me rebuild it. I should disconnect the battery. Is it not a 5.8? It's a 5.8, there's a lot of stuff on there. You know, I'm gonna go get my phone. I'm gonna take a picture of this so I don't forget how it's wired. I don't know if that's spinning or not. I don't know if it's just that loose. Actually, it feels like it's getting tight now. I see that this one is also high quality. Now let's go back downstairs and pull this out. Ooh, stay off my mat. What is that thing? I did tell you all at the beginning that I have no idea what most of this is, right? All right, well, as long as, as, long as you guys can understand that. Exact wrong way to do that. I should have got under it more. I was not strong enough to pull that off. Oh, it looks like grandpa came to join me. Just in the nick of time too. Here it is, starter. Think about bringing the battery over here real quick. I bet you it was wired wrong because they had a, a wire tied around the starter solenoid. Just put a little oil on this side and that side. We that do way that. it's good forever. No worries, yeah. Okay, so our starter is not bad. The engine's no longer stuck. The starter was wired wrong. Today's looking up. Yesterday was not looking this good. Well, I like grease better. Oil's better than nothing, right? Well, good thing this truck comes with a good workbench. Yeah, exactly. I really like the bed on this thing, actually. I think it's got a lot of character. Yeah, it's got a lot of weight, too. It does have a lot. That differential underneath this axle is enormous. Dude. That's the same as, like, a, a bus. It's bigger than a bus. It's got a two-speed. Yeah. The, the axle is definitely a two-speed. The, the differential housing, the rough size is about the size of a bus. But then there's a giant box in front of it. There's also a drum brake on the drive line. Oh, is that for the PTO? Oh, no. That's the hand brake. Oh, that's the emergency brake? This thing doesn't have a PTO, then. Probably not. But it does have a generator. That way I get some oil down in there. This will last a long enough. Heck, if I could just get this thing to bust off today, I'd be happy. That's power now. Well, it moved a little. I didn't really hit it that hard. But it's definitely working smoother. You know what I mean? He pays his own rent. He pays his own rent. That's yeah. Right. For a damn expensive nowadays, it's hard to catch up. There's others that are. In. What should we gap that to? 35. Just 35? Yeah, that's what they always are. Let me use a little It's about too. 35 now. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably Brian. Maybe just run a little while and. 45,000. Hey, go, go. Hey, Dad, how's the truck going? Well, we got the engine unstuck and, uh, well, I. Me, we figured out the problem with the starter. Is it cranking now? We got the starter cranking. We just don't have it in the truck yet. We're getting ready to put it in the truck now. Good. Let me know how that goes. Okay. I just want to check up on you. How's See work? How Are you really that bored that you're calling your old dear old dad? Yeah. I was on the phone <laughs> for three hours yesterday, so. <laughs> All right. Love you. Love you too. Bye. It's like 90% of working on old cars right here. Wire broken. <laughs> If you can get the bolts off, you got to clean them. <laughs> if you can't get the bolts off, that's a different story. That's a whole different battle. We appreciate cleaning them over trying to not... Over when they don't come off. 
Looks like we're gonna be putting this starter back in. Just got a phone call from Radoka and Rob. Apparently he's gonna be joining us on this excursion. So according to grandpa, this is the emergency brake. That's good to know. Nope, that's not gonna work either. So, according to Grandpa, this is the emergency brake. Started in. For now, let's just connect this wire and get the engine cranking. I'm hooking up the wires right now. Might help if I had it turned the right way. Gotta give it to one thing. That handle works pretty good. I like how they painted it to match the door and it's perfectly patinaed. I might just have to leave it that way. Definitely cranking now. Let me go get my compression tester and we'll test the spinning a little more. All I have hooked up is the batteries hooked up straight to the starter and that's it. And then this switch. Hey, hola. How's it going guys? Good, yourself? It's you getting a little warm out here. Yeah. You have turns now? We're doing pretty good Rob because uh, that was stuck yesterday. Cool. You got oil in it, right? The starter, well, I don't know how much oil it, I don't know what the gas to oil ratio is in the oil, but it's at least, I would say 20, 20, 80. I don't know which direction is more oil or gas, but it's definitely got both. What do you want? Best in Harbor Freight compression testers. Oh, compression. Okay. I can't hold it hard enough. Again. There we go. It went up to 90, 85. Hmm. Okay, go. Okay, let go. Ooh, that one's even better. It's like 95. Okay, go. What's that, 100? Oh yeah, that's close to 100. Okay, go. Okay. We're getting better. Ooh. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but we're... Almost 100, <laughs> I think it's... it's 115. Be... Wow, that ain't bad. Go. All right. 120. Okay, go. That's like 95, but that might be because I wasn't able to hold it very well. It was trying to spray out. I did notice this though. Our oil sending unit is dripping right on the, it's leaking right there. It's leaking right on the starter. Yeah. Where our oil's going. On the plus side, we know the oil pump's working. Chinese locking pliers to the rescue. Now we can put our spark plugs back in at least. Shoot, it might even fire up then when you do that. Oh, you know what? Before we put spark plugs, you know what we should probably check is timing. You don't need to check timing. You don't think I should check timing while well, I got the spark plugs out? No, you got you to pull the whole engine out to put the timing chain in it. Yeah, but I could just find top dead center on one and line it up with the... Just get it running. Timing. Okay. It probably didn't change while it was sitting all the time. If it doesn't run, it backfires, and then we can do something. Pull your plugs and see what we do. You should be torquing your spark plugs. I've never done that my whole life. I didn't even know that was a thing. I put them on, I run them on there, and when I feel they get tight, I go a quarter turn. <laughs> I'm going to disconnect this alligator clip. It's not going to fit in there, but I'm going to force it. I'm going to play a little game of if it don't fit, force it. Ballast resistor now has power. Okay, now hit it. Okay, trigger man. <laughs> yep, it's got spark. <laughs> I didn't see it, but I felt it. I have a feeling it's got spark. <laughs> Well, I gotta try to keep it in the shade, otherwise it's gonna overheat. No, I didn't hit nothing. But it's not the first time. I'm pretty sure that's right. Going hot. Okay. Ready? Almost started there. Now let's hook up our fuel system. 
It runs. Maybe put some water right. in the radiator. Okay, flow arrow is going that way. So I'm going to put that there. Did you put your clamp on? I just made sure to go get a clamp before connecting the hose. I still forgot to put it on. Yeah, you probably have to put a valve cover gasket on it. Leaking too. Yeah. Not know anymore. We'll have to put a valve cover RTV on it? Yeah. If I wasn't excited, Gilbert, I'd already left. Yeah, I don't know about y'all, but I really am excited about this. This is Project Sullivan's version of Will It Run? Well, we've had a couple of them in the past. Nothing this old. Okay, fuel pump's pumping. All right, I'm gonna try cranking. Hit that throttle, Rob. We're not getting gas. Probably what it is. I don't know if you're. Let's tap on it. Yeah. Okay, try it again. No. There'd be a there'd be a filter in there, wouldn't it? Sometimes there's a, a last chance filter in the front there. Yeah. All right, let's pull it off. I don't know if I ever wrenched that. But it's got the same problem as every other carbureted engine. It's the carburetor. So this is what I'm build. thinking. I wonder if we can get a carburetor rebuild kit for this thing. That that's just stripped dead. No, I gave you my only 13. Uh, I came in yesterday about a 55 Chevy. Okay. Well, I need a carburetor rebuild kit for it. I was wondering if you guys might have one. Twenty-eight dollars and ninety-nine cents is the price for that. And I can have one here, what is today, Sunday, I can have one here Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning? Yes, sir. Okay, apparently it's time to shit or get off the pot. All right, I literally just got it off as you said that. Yeah. All right, well, we know it'll run. Have to get a carburetor rebuild kit. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be the next episode or not, but we know it'll run. We might have to see if it drives. I'm hoping to do it all in one episode though. We'll see how it goes. And if you've been watching this long, you might as well subscribe. And remember, don't wait for opportunity, create it.